What's up, I'm Ujemma and welcome back to my channel. Chances are through your journey of learning JavaScript, you probably come across articles and videos that mention the terms like ES6 features or ECMAScript, or you might've come across something online that's comparing the differences between ECMAScript and JavaScript. And after coming across these terms or concepts or even articles that would touch on these topics, you probably started wondering what they all meant. The first time that I came across these terms like ES6 or ECMAScript, I started to think about a bigger question of how is JavaScript maintained? So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process that's taken to update and maintain the JavaScript language. And through this video, I'll clarify confusing terms like ES6 features, ECMAScript, and even describe how ECMAScript is different from JavaScript. I'll also explain to you what the TC39 committee is and how important and influential it is to the JavaScript language. So by the end of this video, you should feel more comfortable with dealing with these terms whenever you're talking about JavaScript. So let's answer the big questions first. What is ECMAScript and how is it different from JavaScript? ECMAScript is a set of rules and standards that provide some sort of guide on how to build a programming language. So if you follow the ECMAScript specification, you can go out and build your own ECMAScript compliant programming language. But the most popular programming language that follows the ECMAScript specification is JavaScript. And because of JavaScript's popularity and probably its similar naming convention to ECMAScript, you probably heard the two terms being used interchangeably. But it's important to note that they're two different concepts. ECMAScript describes how you can build a programming language and JavaScript is the implementation following that guide. But where did the ECMAScript specification first come from? To answer that, let's go through a quick JavaScript history lesson. JavaScript was first released under the name LiveScript back in September 1995 as the main scripting language for the Netscape browser. In its early form, LiveScript took a lot of inspiration from the Java programming language while also focusing on a more simplistic syntax. But that was back in 1995. If we fast forward two and a half decades, the only major similarity between JavaScript and Java is probably the coffee. But let's zoom in on those two and a half decades and get a high level understanding of what happened. In 1996, or a year after LiveScript was initially released, Netscape actually submitted the programming language to a standards creation organization called ECMA International. Their hopes in doing this was to create a standard on how to use a language across different browsers. And that standard named ECMAScript was created and released a year later in 1997. Ever since the specification ECMAScript was released in 1997, we've seen a number of updates to the specification. But you now might be wondering who is responsible for updating and maintaining ECMAScript, which influenced later versions of JavaScript. Currently, right now, there are two parties that contribute to updating ECMAScript. The first party is called the TC39 committee, which is responsible for creating and finalizing proposals that will get included in newer versions of ECMAScript. And the second party is the general open source community. Anybody in the open source community can create a proposal and a TC39 committee member can become a champion of that proposal who will support and try to get that proposal into the newer version or the latest version of ECMAScript. But let's take a closer look at the TC39 committee. So TC39 stands for technical committee number 39. It's one of the many subcommittees that reside under the ECMA International Organization. ECMA International is comprised of numerous committees that's responsible for creating standards for communication systems like programming languages or even consumer electronics. So any new feature that is introduced in the latest version of ECMAScript had to first go through a proposal process. And as I mentioned before, anybody can come up with a proposal, but many proposals do come from the TC39 committee. Throughout a proposal's life cycle, there are four stages that it must go through so that the feature can be included in a newer version of ECMAScript. Stage zero proposals are pretty loose or rough ideas and they haven't been submitted for a formal review. Stage one proposals are well-defined and they aim to solve or address a well-known problem. So at this stage, you can expect the proposal to list out the problems that it's aiming to solve, how to use the new feature that it's proposing, and possibly even see some code blocks. Any proposal that makes stage one is an interest of the TC39 committee. At stage two, a proposal will get even more concrete by getting officially implemented. Implementation can take on many different forms. You can make a polyfill, you can make a Babel plugin, or you can even have implementation in an engine. So the next stage, which is stage three, is when a proposal becomes a strong candidate for being included in the next version of ECMAScript. It would be really unusual to see any major changes to the proposal at this time, but you would still expect to see some minor tweaks here and there. And the final stage, which is stage four, is when the proposal is finalized and completed. The feature that was presented in that proposal is now going to be included in the next version of ECMAScript. So you could imagine since anyone can create a proposal and each proposal has to go through these stages, which can take up around a year in total, there's gonna to be a ton of proposals that are gonna go through the stage and ultimately get finalized. 
And because there's so many proposals that get finalized each year, ECMAScript just batches these features in yearly releases. So when you see ES 2015 or ECMAScript 2020 or even ES 6, you're just looking at different naming conventions for ECMAScript versions. And looking at these different naming conventions, you can already tell how confusing it is to keep track of different ECMAScript versions. So the naming convention ES, which stands for ECMAScript, first started when ECMAScript was initially released back in 1997. So in 1997, we were dealing with ES 1. But back then, ECMAScript wasn't getting updated annually. So oddly enough, ES5, which is the fifth version of ECMAScript, was released in 2009, 11 years after the first release. But all that changed when ES6 was released in 2015. So instead of using version numbers like 6, 7, or 8, we now refer to an ECMAScript version by the year that it was released. So instead of saying ES6, we say ES2015, so we know that we're dealing with the 2015 version of ECMAScript. And ever since 2015, we've gone with the year naming convention. So at the time of this recording, we're dealing with the ES 2020. So even though ECMAScript and JavaScript have been around for a little over 20 years by this point, we've seen some of the biggest updates from just the past five years. During this time, we've seen the introduction of async in 2017 and some really helpful data types like big int in 2020. If you want to check out more features that have been released in the past couple of years, you can go down in the description box and check out all the proposals. When I first started learning JavaScript, ECMAScript was such a daunting term. I always try to avoid it as much as possible and just focus on learning the language. But as years have gone on and and the more I've gotten comfortable with ECMAScript and talking about it, I realized how much more excited I was to talk about new feature releases for the specification. So every time ECMAScript gets updated, JavaScript gets updated. And that makes my life as a developer so much easier because JavaScript getting updated means that my development process can be even more streamlined. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you have a better understanding of what ECMAScript is, how JavaScript relates to ECMAScript, what ES6, 2015, all that kind of stuff is. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to the channel for more content. I'm also on Twitter where I talk about a variety of topics. You can go follow me and send me a DM and we can have a chat. And with that being said, I will catch you on the next one.